Hello and welcome to a GCSE history revision tutorial looking at the evacuation route for the wounded on the British sector of the Western Front, which is our historic environment unit for Paper 1, uh, British Medicine. So in this presentation, we're going to look at all of the stages of the evacuation route, working first from stretcher bearers out in no man's land to the regimental aid post, then to the dressing station and the field ambulance, then to the casualty clearing station, and then finally the base hospital. As we're working through the presentation, you might do well to pause at the end of each one of these sections to take really brief summary notes on each stage. What we're trying to do is to commit each of these stages to our memory and we're certainly trying to get the order of the evacuation route very clear as well. So let's firstly look at the work of the stretcher bearers and you can see a team in action on the screen here. So your team of stretcher bearers only carried basic medical supplies out into no man's land where they rescued wounded men who needed to be retrieved who couldn't make their own way back to the trenches. The teams usually worked in groups of four, but the stretcher bearers only carry really limited supplies, only morphine for pain killing and bandages to stem any serious wounding. The teams had to work really quickly. Often they were under fire themselves. This was dangerous work performed by men, often of the Royal Army Medical Corps, the RAMC. The major problems also is that there were just so few of them, usually only 16 per 1,000 men. So during major battles or even just during serious raids, there were often shortages um, of stretcher bearers. And they could really struggle in the mud and the debris of no man's land. This was a particularly a problem around Ypres. So our next stage in the evacuation route as your regimental aid post. So when your wounded made it back into their own trenches, they'd visit the regimental aid post. This was a dugout in the trenches where their wounds would be diagnosed. Any minor wounds that could be were bandaged and cleaned and more serious uh, cases would be sent on up the system. Again, the problem here is one of shortages there was only one medical officer per battalion and that could be up to a thousand men and the aid posts were often poorly lit they were dirty they were in the trenches themselves so often they struggled from the same problems such as being under fire and having to work incredibly quickly in very dangerous and dirty conditions only providing very basic and very swift medical care so moving further back from the fighting now would be mobile units such as dressing stations or the field ambulance. Now here is where our soldiers would receive proper medical care out of harm's way for the first time. They'd find medical officers there and after 1915 these units would also be staffed by nurses. Now dressing stations and field ambulance units will be set up often in tents or in any derelict buildings or empty spaces that could be found. Don't get the idea that the field ambulance is just a van with flashing lights, but it was mobile. The idea here is that soldiers are getting quick care and they're going to be treated, but then moved up the system if they need to. These mobile units had limitations. Shortly, they didn't have specialist equipment. They were temporary. They're really there to treat cases and then move them up quickly and swiftly to casualty clearing stations. So casualty clearing stations were often housed in more permanent um, locations. They were large, they were well equipped. They'd find, you'd find specialist doctors there, nurses and other technicians as well. Casualty clearing stations could perform most operations and as the war went on, could also house X-ray units. 
The role of the casualty clearing stations really developed as the war went on. The first ones were quite basic, however by 1918 they were really quite advanced and performing quite specialist work. But again, we've got problems here of the um, capacity that they had for treating large numbers of wounded soldiers during large battles or if a major offensive had taken place. So our final stage in the evacuation route was the base hospital. This would be well away from the fighting, often in an existing hospital, usually located in France, or from other large buildings that had been converted to that use. And again, they developed as the war went on, with specialist operating theatres, laboratories for research, and also permanent X-ray units with radiologists. But the major problem was really getting the soldiers to the base hospital in the first place. So the care was excellent, but the journey there was often slow and painful. And a lot of these soldiers had traumatic injuries that needed swift attention. So the time delay and the journey to a base hospital, which had often been miles and miles away from the fighting, was a real problem. So that's the evacuation route in summary. This knowledge is key. You're going to need this at all stages of your work on the uh, British sector of the, um, of the Western Front. It's going to come into every question that we're going to face for our key, uh, key features questions, for being able to evaluate sources in context, showing that you know the, um, the, uh, the period and the location that you're looking at. And you're also going to need it to construct a meaningful historical inquiry. What we need you to do is to learn this information off by heart, each stage and the order of the evacuation route. So to give you an idea of how you're going to need it, just have a look at these two past, uh, past questions. I hope you can see that you'd need to know about the evacuation route to be able to access these well. Now there's guidance in our other videos about how to do these questions in detail. Okay, that brings us to an end. Thanks for watching. There's plenty of other useful videos for you to have a look at on the CHSG History Channel, which shows you how to do specific questions as well as giving you more revision tips.